if I want to hire somebody, what are your suggestions? Well, I actually think you're a lot more knowledgeable on this than I am. I mean, I, I do have a situation of knowing someone personally who was hired into a spot as an intern and, and did very well. Mm -hmm. uh, although I hear that's the exception. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that the young people know all this stuff, and so they just give them a green light uh, on their Twitter and in their Facebook and everything. And, and, and maybe now, within the last year, it's changed. But uh, it seemed for a while uh, people didn't take this seriously. This is absolutely something I see every day, the intern versus the advanced skill worker. And what I see is, on one hand, let's say it's 8 o'clock in the morning, I'll get an email from a CEO of an organization that will moan and complain about grammar, spelling, and communication skills of young people today. They don't know how to spell. They don't know how to communicate. Uh, it's horrible. And then an hour later, when we discuss hiring somebody to manage their social media, they'll say, we'll just hire a 17-year-old, or maybe we'll get an intern from the local college. Well, a moment ago, you were very concerned about their ability to spell and use grammar, and now you're willing to hand over your whole brand image to this young person. I'm not saying they're not qualified. I do just have to point out, it's hard for me to point this out to them at the moment because they're not ready to hear it, but I hear these um, mixed messages all the time. Interns are valuable. You have to pick them carefully. Hopefully you're going to choose an intern from maybe the marketing department or journalism school or even the computer science department. Why? Because they are more focused on what you need. Just picking a random young person because they're inexpensive and you expect social media to be easy and inexpensive is a very costly mistake and can do irreparable damage to your brand. Well, it, hiring an intern or even a professional to do social media is one thing, but how wise is it to hire someone out of college to build your website and do all that? I mean, it seems to me that just hiring them, you'd have to really know what it is you need to hire. Absolutely. Again, this goes back to your strategy. This goes back to pr your priorities. What do you need to do? What are your needs? You need to understand what your needs are before you can go pick the tool that will solve that problem. The more we talk about this, the more I realize there's this interrelationship between what's on your website, what you're saying in your social media, what you're selling and doing in person with your customers, mm -hmm. and it all has to work together. Uh, there are veteran people in your company who know that business process pretty well, um, how, what's the best way if you hire somebody and bring them in, how do, how do you get them up to speed on the business environment? That's a great question. My recommendation is no matter whom you're hiring, whether they are an intern or they have an advanced skill, to really pair them with somebody in your organization of a more senior level that's been there, that understands your culture, that understands the way your customers experience your business. It is an experience that you're selling, even if it's a product. So understanding how you communicate, how you do business, everything that makes your brand what it is and makes it special, that new hire is not going to understand that. And would you rather that they figure it out and run the risk that they don't figure it out? Or I think it's a good idea to pair them with somebody that understands that and can relay that information. If it's an hour a day, uh, a long lunch every week, get those people together so that this new person can ask questions, questions that you probably could never have anticipated, information that they need that you didn't know about. But the senior person is also going to share little tidbits of information that are valuable. Well, it's a two-way street, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people over 30 do not realize the impact of social media, and perhaps they're in a little state of denial or reluctance to accept it. So if that hire can help persuade the more experienced business person uh, about how these tools are effective, then we're actually going to get them trained on the tools at the same time. They call that reverse mentoring. It's really common in today's larger businesses. We see that uh, regularly where a younger person or someone that is more versed in the digital arts is paired with a more senior member that simply doesn't have the experience. What happens is they trade knowledge. Uh, the younger person may give the digital information, help them set up their smartphone, help them become more comfortable with LinkedIn or Facebook as an example, or at least show them YouTube videos. And then the senior member can relay information about classic business business techniques, strategy, communication, customer service, quality, those things don't go away. I don't care what kinds of tools you're using. So there really is a double benefit. Absolutely. To Absolutely. And, and, and out of this process, you're going to get a, a retooled 
uh, experienced business person in addition to the new hire that now hopefully has learned the business. That seems like a valuable option as long as the job description and, and the hiring criteria make sense. I know we're going to try to provide some of the examples of that uh, online as well. Uh, but do you have any comments on, on what uh, you should look for uh, in a new hire? Well, I do think the job descriptions that we're going to provide on web for biz are going to be very, very useful because there's going to be terms, there's going to be skills that are going to be on those job descriptions that some of our viewers haven't thought of, first of all. Second of all, I think it's really important to be aware of what the pay range is for these skill sets. Uh, again, the assumption that it's easy, that it's new, that anybody can do it is an is um, a first assumption, and it is in fact an assumption. There are heavy skills that go into this. Again, communication, writing, copywriting, uh, journalism, these are all big skills. Design, market research, marketing, all of these tools are very, very useful, necessary skills, and there are people going to school for these types of skills. So you would reward somebody that has advanced skills with an, an appropriate salary range. So I recommend doing research to understand what these people are able to get in a metropolitan area or a smaller area and uh, offer an appropriate pay range because it would, it would be unfortunate for you to try and hire for a position and actually really need that person with your best intent yet not offer enough money for that job. Sounds like it's more of a marketing communications position than an IT type it position. It really is and I, it, this is, uh, social media is, so, is nicely fitting into marketing and communication departments and what we're finding now is that marketing and PR firms are bringing these skills in and adding them to their classic techniques that they've been using for a very long time. They just need new tools to distribute that information. I can't resist the temptation to tell this story. I, I met a man who runs a huge uh, music concert venue mm -hmm. three years ago. If anybody was seen using a cell phone while he was managing a shift or anything like that, they were fired immediately. Mm -hmm. Now he's openly encouraging them, tweet, send a picture, go on Facebook, because they bring people in. Absolutely. So not only in the marketing side of the house, but in the operational side of the house, there's a scary new transparency to the way businesses do business. Uh, and hiring employees in any department could include with it an aspect of social media use that they do. How do you advise businesses to deal with that? Should they allow anybody to go on social media and represent the company? I think they need to make it very clear how important it is uh, that their employees are involved. And each organization is going to have to make decisions about this. But there really needs to be social media sensitivity training, very similar to harassment um, sensitivity training. They, there need to be very, very clear to the employees what's acceptable, what isn't. If you are comfortable allowing your companies, your employees to uh, mention their company, put it on their profiles. If you're in financial services, many, many brokers are not even able to name the company that they work for. So this is something that each organization needs to address individually. What are your priorities? How much transparency do you want to have? Um, now, your employees may very well be able to use social media, and that's a freedom of speech issue as well. But if you do have the, um, the possibility that we would prefer that you not mention that you're on the job at the moment, Please use the tools as you see fit, but please don't bring our name into it unless you are approved to discuss our business. And then there's that second authoritative level uh, who is allowed to use company branded accounts. Some companies use, um, let's say, Ford Motor Company. Their Twitter handle, I'm assuming, is Ford something like that. Uh, now they might have uh, their VP of development could be Bob VP at Ford. Now that's in the name. Uh, CNN does this. Almost all of their anchors have their own Twitter handle and they have CNN in the name. So there's varying degrees of authority. No mention at all. Um, Co-branded, um, the employee's name plus the company. Then the full company. So whomever it is that's managing CNN's account, as a matter of fact, they need to be very clear um, and go through sensitivity training so that they don't unfortunately post a photo of their personal dog or their Thanksgiving meal to the company account. So there's several different layers of that, but at this point I know that there are companies that are missing out on qualified candidates. Why? Because they're not allowing them to use mobile phones. 
They're not allowing them to use Facebook. They're not giving them access. These companies are not getting the most qualified candidates under the age of about 35 because this is a priority for the employees. So if those companies aren't allowing it, they are simply shutting out opportunities for labor. Their best candidates are not even considering them because they're not allowing it. This is something that business owners need to take into account. Again, it's a minimum for doing business. Well, that's a whole new way of thinking. I'm sure a lot of business owners are going to be have, have a hard time working through that process. But I think you shared a lot of valuable insights on the hiring process. Mm -hmm.